Good morning. Welcome back. How's everyone doing? Wednesday. Is your birthday yesterday, Chef? <coughs> Welcome back, everyone. Welcome to another stream. <laughs> yeah, Tesla's, uh, Tesla's hot. That 214 level is going to be big. Almost up 100% on my Tesla shares. Almost. I got 100 at 110. So we need 220. 220. <laughs> crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. The buying opportunities that were apparent. Hopefully some of you were greedy when others were fearful. I don't think I could have talked more about that without people unsubscribing to my YouTube channel. <laughs> Here's a little update on M1. So you guys remember this number being down 10,000, down 20%? Well, it is now green. My, my long-term portfolio is now green. After a very long period of just buying, 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 buying all of last year. Pretty awesome. 94% on Tesla and M1, 60% on NVIDIA. Still down a little on AbV. Actually, no, that's that's not year-to-date. Yeah, that's all is 
So yeah, still down on Tesla, down on AMD, 52% on shop. Yeah, awesome. M1's the best. M1 is the best. If you want to, if you want to, autom if you want to make an automated way to invest in your future, you guys can see right here, right? Trading, I'll go deposits and withdrawals, right? This is every single week for the last, since November 3rd, 2021, every single week. Just investing in the market, time in the market versus timing the market. And that is your uh, that is your equity curve. So if you guys are serious about long-term investing, um, especially during times like we're in now, where the market has been, right, when you can get Tesla down like an ungodly amount, <laughs> when you can get a stock like NVIDIA down an ungodly amount, just think about, you know, exactly. I think about when think about that portfolio when the market actually comes back. However long that takes, it doesn't matter to me, right? It doesn't matter to me. But however long that takes, whenever that happens, you guys know I'll be sipping my martinis. All right. So anyways, just a little reminder that the long-term investments are something to be paying attention to and uh dollar cost averaging into a bear market is is uh is it works and there's proof right there so welcome back hope everyone had a good day yesterday um good day on good day for me on the scalp account not bad like 250 bucks on the scalp account had a nice trade in my sep uh so it was a good day uh, nice meta rejection i posted that live trade on instagram on twitter if you guys want to follow me there i usually post my live trades if i don't put it on youtube it will be on the Instagram and the Twitter account so you can go ahead and check that out So yesterday there was some key levels that did hold I made a video yesterday about these levels I would be watching these levels today. I'll go over them in the live stream today There was an interesting level that held on the ES on the Nasdaq on the spy It was a previous Monday Tuesday low from last week. It held very very well after CPI Doesn't mean that we're gonna you know doesn't mean we're gonna continue higher, but it was a very, uh, it's a level that you have to be paying attention to, right? Paying attention to this level, trading off of it intraday, right? You have to be aware of where these levels are today. And that is, uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to get you guys ready for today's trading day, get you some levels to be watching on the overall market, and hopefully uh, catch some nice trades off them. So let's do it. Welcome back. Press the like button. I want to say thank you guys for all the support on the live streams. When I started this live stream, I had no idea that we would have, you know, sometimes peak of 2,000 people here. That's crazy. Uh, if you guys know, like, uh, Stock Market Live, shout out to Josh, uh, the cult. You know, he was always, he's, uh, he gets, I know he has more. He usually has like four or 5,000 people on it. But I had no expectations of having half of what he's been having on his live streams because he was someone I always looked up to on the live streams. So thank you guys again. This is crazy uh, to be able to grow this big. I'm assuming it's that people like the content, so we're going to continue to do what we do. Uh, thank you for all of the support. Press the like button, as always. You guys always hear me say that. Uh, we hit 1,000 likes on the stream yesterday, which was a big goal of mine. So now we have to make that a consistent, right? We got to have 1,000 likes every stream. That's like usually if 70% of the people press the like button, we would have it consistently. But, hey, we'll get there. We'll get there. So, yeah. Let's get started. Thank you guys again. And 60,000 subscribers. We got to hit those Carmine Rosado numbers. That guy blew up. <laughs> Carmine's a good guy. Go check him out. Even though he, I'm not, I'm not really help, helping him much by saying check him out. But uh, yeah, that guy blew up. He's, uh, I need to reach, I need to reach some Carmine numbers on this channel. Shout out to you, Carmine. All right. So uh, today is... Uh, today is Wednesday, February 15th, and we are going to look at the earnings and economic calendar. As always, this morning we have retail sales, so that is something that can influence this market. Uh, let's go ahead and pull that up. Retail sales, let's see what my ad is today. T-Mobile, home internet. Oh, Xfinity. Yeah, I guess 
Xfinity is my ad today. <laughs> um, retail sales, that is today. Uh, you guys can see right here, 830. That is uh, in the pre-market in about 22 minutes. You guys impressed how quickly I can do mental math on these times? 22 minutes. Um, retail sales, let's keep an eye on that. We'll see how that affects the market here early morning. Production index, capacity utilization rate, not, not really anything that, uh, nothing that's going to uh, really move the market, I don't think. I think it's going to be all about these retail sales today. Tomorrow, jobless claims, and then that's pretty much the end of the week for the economic calendar. What do we got next week? Uh, PMI, markets closed Monday, let's remember that. Uh, FOMC minutes of February. Okay, so we got minutes on the t on Wednesday, and we got GDP on Thursday. So that's a pretty big week right there. Minutes Wednesday, GDP Thursday, and then we got, of course, PCE index. So next week, we got some pretty heavy stuff Wednesday through Friday, so we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, but this week, pretty much job uh, retail sales, jobless claims, and then we're pretty much uh, set for the week. All right, so that's that. Let's pull up the earnings calendar because you guys know me. I am the delusional one-eyed shop bull. Uh, <laughs> and I think today Shopify reports earnings. So hoping for the best on Shopify earnings. Uh, that would be a really nice little uh, cherry on top for me so far this year. If we can get a really strong shop earnings, if we can get a nice move on shop, that would be very, very good for my long-term portfolio. Uh, so Shopify, you guys can see, is today after close. We have Roku after close. This morning we had Roblox, which I think is higher actually. Uh, Roblox, I saw it up here before. Yeah, Roblox is, wow. It's actually up quite a bit, Roblox. Yeah, Roblox, pretty nice move on earnings right here. That might sort of, that might spark some, uh, some small cap action. Um, let me go ahead and pull that earnings back up. So Roblox, Trade Desk. Uh, this morning, and then Shopify, Roku, After Hours. Twilio is also a pretty big one to keep an eye out for. We got Datadog. We got Crocs, Paramount. Paramount, actually, uh, interesting enough, if you guys saw Warren Buffett's uh, 13F, I think it was, where he updates you know, the holdings in the, uh, in the Berkshire Hathaway uh, portfolio, they increased their, their weighting in Paramount. So that's interesting. That might get a little bit of juice today because of that. Uh, we'll also talk about them decreasing their TSM position. Uh, they decreased their TSM position pretty, uh, pretty uh, substantially, and you guys saw uh, the downside on TSM in the after hours last night. So we'll talk about that as well. Obviously, some movements based off of uh, Warren Buffett's actions in that portfolio. So Datadog, Crocs, Paramount, DraftKings, Applied Materials, that's pretty much it. DoorDash, all these little ones, Redfin, HubSpot. So today, after our shop and Roku, all right? Yeah, Robox is, uh, she's moving a little bit. Maybe we'll take a look at that one after. All right, so Tesla 214, this is a huge level for Tesla. This is the previous high. You have to be watching 214 on Tesla today. NVIDIA 230 is a major daily chart level to be watching today. NVIDIA, Tesla have been beasts. Um, I, I don't know how I got, <laughs> I guess... I guess I was just paying attention because the you know Tesla, Nvidia were the two that I picked for uh, the long term, and those things have just outperformed recently. Uh, so I'm really happy about that. Google 93, I took a trade off this yesterday. Uh, Going to be watching this today. Meta daily retest. Coin. Uh, so coins getting some upside. The whole crypto space is getting some upside this morning. Um, Ethereum, Bitcoin, everything's up pretty aggressively. So you're seeing some upside on coin. I don't typically trade this stock, but there is an interesting setup here that I wanted to share. Shop over 50, uh, and then finally TSM. We'll take a look at this TSM move to the downside after Warren Buffett uh, lowered the stake in that portfolio. All right? So that's what I got on there, and then we'll uh, obviously look at some other stuff as we, as we go on. So let's get started. Let's start on the ES. So the ES... Um, interesting spot, right? Really nothing has changed since CPI yesterday, right? We, we really don't see, we're still in the, we're still in this sideways channel, right? We're definitely still in that. You can see it right here. We're still between 4,200 
and uh, 4050, right? Major, major supply up here at 4200, and a pretty nice demand hold down here at 4050. Until we get a move above or below this range, we have to continue to be short term traders. We have to be scalpers. We have to be, you know, traders that watch intraday price action. It's not going to be easy trading in this range, right? Every day could bring something different. We can't have a bias coming into the day. We have to continue to watch the intraday price action. And yesterday, right, the reason why uh, I looked for upside yesterday after a key hold was, uh, was the intraday price action, right? The intraday price action definitely showed us that upside was the move to be looking for. And there is a reason why, and I'll show you right now. So if we go to the 15 minute, actually, you know what? We'll go back to the 30. Yesterday on CPI, we moved down right into this previous demand from Monday and Tuesday of last week. Now, you can see this was also a rejection point on Friday of last week. So we were trading above, before CPI, we were trading above this previous high and this previous double bottom support. Now, when we traded down into that level, I'll go to the five minute chart. You can see we traded down into that level here. We got about, I guess you can't, I can't say that upside was the right play yesterday because there was plays on both sides. So let me take that back because we traded downside off 415 which on the SPY was right around here, which I'll go over that. So let me take that back, right? Yesterday was a little bit just sort of everything, but there was a key hold, which uh, which was very important to be paying attention to, and it was this 4105 level on the ES. It's this hold right here around 1130, 12 o'clock yesterday, which is, I think, the most important level to be paying attention to today. This level, right, again, is the previous double bottom low from Monday, Tuesday, and the low from yesterday after CPI. It was also the rejection from Friday. So today, right, um, today, right, we have to watch that level. If we trade back into that level, you cannot get aggressive on puts here. It just doesn't work, right? You have to wait for it to be clearly below it for to really show that rejection uh, underneath it, right? If you get aggressive, on the short side, before you break this level, you are asking to get stuck in this, in this, in this. You have to trust this level. You have to look at this level, and you have to play off of it. So if we move back into this 4105 today, if you start to see demand step up here, maybe there's another upside play to be had, right? That's possible. That's a demand level that is has already proven itself one, two, three times. So if we trade back into that level, then at least you get some risk-reward to try to play a potential demand bounce. If we trade underneath this level today, right? If we do something like this, where we break it, we retest it, and we hold below it, then you have your risk reward to the downside. So I think today, the most important level to be paying attention to on the ES futures is 4105. 4100, 4105, can we make a play off this level? Either direction, it doesn't matter. Which direction can we play off this level? This is where you wanna to try to set up plays, right here, you want to try to set up plays here. You want to try to set up plays here. You do not try to set up plays in here, in here, because you're biased. I think we should move down. Uh, you know, I'm not. I'm going to make a play right in the middle of this channel. No, we got to set up our plays off the levels. We either look to long the demand if it holds. We look to short the demand into a new supply. We look to short the supply above. We look to play demand off the 4050. Right, that's the key. Right, that's the key. So, if we uh, if we move into that level, let's see what happens down at forty one oh five. If we break under it, then I'd look for that downside in the forty fifty, uh, and to the upside. Right, it's it's like a it's not a key key right. It's not a key key level. Um, it's not like a major. It's you can see it's these declining lows, previous high, previous high, previous high, previous high. So I would just continue to watch every single previous high that's really all we can do here you watch this high at 4150 you watch this high at 4170 you watch this high at 4180 you watch the highs around this 4200 right we got to keep an eye on these highs and we got to make sure that we're not going long into these highs uh, because for example real quick i'll sw move over to the spy if you went long into right these highs from yesterday around 415 
if you went long into 4.15 yesterday, if you weren't paying attention to the previous highs on this chart, so I'll go ahead and this is where we took the meta put yesterday, right? If you went long into 4.15 yesterday, not paying attention to where those previous supply levels were, right? You can see what happened. Bam. So in a channel, we have to watch all the previous highs, previous lows. We have to respect them. We have to respect them to both sides, right? We got to respect the shorts at the supply. We have to respect the longs at the demand. That's just what we have to do. Uh, so uh, back on the ES, here's what I'd be watching today, right? We're watching 4105 demand. We're watching 4050 demand. And we're watching all the previous highs. We're watching 4150, right? We're watching 4170. We're watching 4180. And we're just going to continue to monitor what the price action looks like at each of these highs. And make sure that we are not longing into highs unless it is turning into a new support, right? The only time you can go long at these highs, let's say we go into the five-minute chart here. Let's say we move up today, right? Let's say the price action is moving up. Let's say we turn 41.50 into support. Then you could maybe try to long here because at least you have your risk reward. You stop out under 41.50. Let's say you continue higher today. Let's say you move even higher. Let's say you get up into 4170, right? Let's say you're above 4170. If you start to see the intraday price action start to consolidate above 4170, then maybe you could try to long it off that level. But we can't long, right? We can't long here. We can't get at, we can't get FOMO and say, "Oh shit." Look at this thing. I'm going to go long right here, right? Right under the key level. You go long there looking to see if you can play a breakout. This is what happens to you in this market. Boom. So use the levels. Trust the levels. I think today you watch 4150. Uh, pretty much this zone right here, 4150. You can maybe move it up to like that 4155 right in there. 4155, 4150, 4105, 4170. Keep an eye on those levels. Try to play off them today uh, as we approach the day. All right? That's the ES. On the SPY, uh, if I go to the hourly chart, you guys can see right here. The key level that held yesterday was 408. You guys can see the previous low here. 408, 408, 408. So that's our key demand today. If we hold 408, we'll have to see what happens there. If we lose 408, we can look for that next downside move. If we move to the upside, right, where's our next rejection point? I'm thinking it's around 415. That's yesterday's rejection point. So I'd watch 415, right? I'd watch this high here, 416. And then, of course, we have that major supply above 418, 420. So 415 to 408. Watch those levels. You're sitting right in the middle of it, right? How do you know which way it goes right in the middle? We got to wait for it to tap those levels, to, to test those levels. NASDAQ, pretty much the exact same thing, right? Where did it hold yesterday? Right here at 12,450. You guys can see right there, 12,450, 12,450. That's where the key demand stepped in yesterday. We cannot short into this level, right? If you short here, you're asking to get a demand bounce against you. You don't want to do that. You wait for the break, you wait for it to turn into a rejection point, then you could look for that short into the next low, 12.3. Right? That's what I would look for there. If you push to the upside, where did we reject yesterday? Right, we rejected right around this 12.660. I'm going to go ahead and push this to the left. Let's see if that lines up to anything. Not really. As you can see, we sort of have these declining highs, right? this little downtrend that's formed. So I would just, of course, you got to watch the previous day highs, right? Right in here, 12,660. Keep an eye on that, right? Keep an eye on these highs. We got to watch every single high in this uh, in this environment. 12,720, keep an eye there. Watch this high around 12,8. And that's where that major supply really starts, around that 12,8, right? This major supply really, really steps in from 12,8 to 13,000. Here's the daily chart, and you can clearly see it there. Previous lows, previous highs, previous consolidation, previous highs, and again, a rejection right here in this zone. So are you going to be the person that goes long right here because they have FOMO and then 
they see that happen. No, we cannot be going long into a proven major supply level. It's okay to miss this move, right? It's okay to miss this move. If you go through this level, it's okay to miss this move because the real long entry, like the really confident long entry is this, right? Above 13,000. The really confident long entry is above 4,200, right? On the ES. That's where the real confident uh, breakout long entry is. So it's okay to miss some of this move. If you don't trust it, if you don't feel comfortable trading in this range, it's okay, right? There's nothing wrong with that. I wouldn't say that's a bad idea to just be cautious in this entire range. If you guys are intraday traders, if you feel comfortable trading intraday off these levels, then so be it. Uh, but this is really the major, major level up above, right? If we go to the daily chart, rejection, 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 4,200 is the really big level above to be paying attention to. And 13,000 is the major, major level above to be paying attention to. All right. So hopefully that helps. I mean, today we just got to watch these short-term levels, right? That's all we can do in this channel. We just have to trust the levels, play the levels. That's all we can do, right? If you're wrong, you're wrong. Who gives a shit, all right? If you, if you go short off this high and you're wrong, I can't say you did something wrong. And you can't either. If you go long, I'm sorry. If you, yeah, if you short off this, if you go long down here at 12,450 after a little bit of demand hold, and let's say it does something like this, it, there's nothing you can do, right? No one can tell you that this was not a good long entry. That That's a long entry that you take, right? That's a risk-reward long entry that, you know, if the market does what it's been doing, then you take a nice trade uh, and you win on it. But sometimes it just doesn't work, right? If you short this high because you think that we're going to reject uh, this previous high right here, let's say you see, start to see some price action stack up here, you start to see some sellers stack up here, and you're trying to see if you can play that reversal. If something like this happens, right, and you get stopped out right over that 12,720, that's trading, guys, right? But at least you set up a good risk reward, and at least you're playing your levels, uh, because more often than not, playing the levels does work. Um, but sometimes there's going to be little, you know, there's going to be times where those levels get invalidated, and you have to take your loss, right? That's just that's just trading for you. It's better, right? It's better to do that than to go long right here and have no fucking idea where the stock's going to go, right? Instead of going long here and be like, oh, I'm going to hope that it goes up here, even though I have no idea why it would, right? At least you're setting up those trades. So keep an eye on those levels. Dow Jones, stuck, nothing. I got nothing for you on the Dow. It's in the same damn level it's been in for the last two weeks. Russell. Uh, you got to hold 1905 on Russell, 1900, right? You got to hold this area, right? That's a must hold level on the Russell. You break that, you move lower. Uh, you've been holding that for now. So you can see it's continuing to hold that 1900 area. That's the major, major level on the Russell. All right. So that's that. Let's, uh, let's jump into Tesla before retail sales here. So. Very interesting channel here on uh, very interesting channel here on Tesla. You can see we're starting to creep towards the top side of this channel on the four hour chart. You guys can see we had these previous highs here. We had some of these previous rejections over here. This is around 225 to 230, right? 225 to 230 is uh, is this entire zone that I would be paying attention to on Tesla uh, for potential rejections or just at least for it to slow down in that area. You can see we had a previous channel high here. We had all the previous channel highs here. That is, uh, that is something to be, patient, uh, be cautious of, right? You don't want to be going long, taking long entries in this red zone because you're asking to get a reversal against you. So we got to watch out for 225, 230 today on Tesla. If it does continue higher, that's, that's going to be the level to watch. Um, it is holding. It, it, it held a strange area. I'm not going to lie. I really don't know why Tesla held this area. I guess you could say it's like this previous high here, right around this 188, 190. But I didn't really see any type of real like retest level in this zone. But it definitely, you know, it showed us that it did want to hold that 188, 190. It was this previous high here. Maybe that's where it tried to hold on to. It got right back above 200 yesterday. And it is now trading back into... Let me get a little bit more time here. 
it is trading back into this previous high. So today, for me, right, for me, I think I'm going to wait to see, does Tesla try to maintain uh, the high of this candle is 214 on the dot. So 214 on the dot, I'll keep an eye on that. I think for me, I would need to see Tesla turn 214 into a really solid support today. Um, if it does, then maybe there's a long entry into that 225 area. That's possible. Uh, but just please be careful, right? You're trading right at this previous high. You do not want to long it at the previous high, right? You don't want to just long it here at this previous high. I would want to see, you know, a clean break, a very clean little hold and consolidation above 214, and then maybe we can long it off that. Uh, but going long right at 214, a little bit questionable. Previous high, we have to be careful of that. Uh, very big push yesterday. I would say you can also just keep an eye out for some of these, cons this little consolidation range from the pre-market after hour session, right in this uh, 210, 211 area. You can see if there's a pullback here, maybe there's something you could take advantage here in this pre-market area uh, on Tesla, if it's very strong today. All right, so let's uh, we got let's go ahead let's go ahead and we'll take a look at retail sales real quick. Let's see if that affects the market here at all, and then we will uh, we will continue there on Tesla and the rest of the names today. So here's the five minute chart on ES. Let's take a look at retail sales. Let's see how this affects the market. Forty one oh five low, forty one fifty high here for now. Let's see if any of these get invalidated, and then we can sort of game plan off that. Press the like button, subscribe to the channel. Wow, we already have 500 likes. Hey, you guys are actually liking the, liking the channel, liking the live stream. How nice of you. Okay, a little reaction to the downside. We always get that quick blip. Now we got to wait to see if it follows through. Waiting for the n numbers here. So quick blip to the downside down to like the 4115. Sort of getting bought up there. This is similar to what we saw yesterday on CPI. We got that quick push to the downside, then a recovery. We'll see what happens here. We got to wait this out, right? No levels have been invalidated yet. We're still trading in between these levels, so no levels have been invalidated. <clears throat> Just waiting for the data here on my bot. Retail sales increased 3%. Okay, so it increased a percent more than the estimation. Thank you, guys. You guys are quicker than my... <laughs> I'd probably... Maybe I'll maybe I'll get uh maybe once the live streams hit like five thousand viewers we'll hit the uh, we'll get the uh, the Bloomberg terminal once we grow large enough that'll be the goal. Um, so retail sales increasing is technically bearish for inflation. Uh, markets not really reacting much off of it. Just got just flipped green on that. Uh, the reason why retail sales being up higher than estimations is because people are spending money, right? Uh, if retail sales were lower, that means that the you know people are not spending money. It means it may help out for uh, for uh, inflation reasons, but a higher retail sales potentially bearish. Um, obviously, we just got to watch the market. Uh, potentially bearish because people are still spending, right? Money's still being thrown out there. <laughs> so retail sales month over month, 3% versus 1.8 estimate. Core retail sales, 2.3 versus 0.8. So a pretty big increase month over month on retail sales. We'll see how the market takes that. Uh, but that technically is, uh, is a bearish reading. But yeah, we have to, right? We have to just watch how the market takes it. We can't, we can't, try, to, uh, we can't try to change what the market's doing because we believe in one certain thing, right? We have to just accept what the market is doing. Uh, so retail sales, 3%, estimated 2%. Previous down 1.1%. X auto 2.3 versus 0.9. X auto and gas 2.6 versus 0.9. And uh, control group 1.7 versus 1. I don't even know what that control group is, to be honest. So retail sales up 
People are still spending. All right. So as of right now, uh, market is slightly lower, but nothing that's breaking anything. Uh, we can take a look at that dollar real quick. Yeah, dollar has sort of uh, continued here, which could put on some, could put some, uh, some, uh, could cause some weakness on equities. You guys can see the dollar is pushing higher once again, right here. Dollar pushing higher off that news. You did sort of hold that 103 level that we talked about yesterday, right? That 103 level did hold on once again, right here. 103, 103 held on. We're pushing off of it. Your next major resistance is not until like this 104.50. So we could try to reach that if uh, if the market wants to continue higher or if the dollar wants to continue higher. Credit card debt all time high. Yeah. Yeah. I don't I don't I don't I don't doubt it. But right. Yes. Right. Yes. We're getting a little bit of downside, but that does not change. The fact that we can't short into this 4105. We have to trust these levels. Just because you get a downside move on this data in between this channel does not mean we totally forget about this level, right? We have to continue to watch these levels. So nothing changed yet. Everything is pretty much still within the levels that we talked about. Nothing has changed. Let me, let me know if anything breaks here, and I'll jump back to it. Tesla, yeah, so 214, I think, is your level to watch today on Tesla. Um, keep an eye on that area. That's going to be a big level there today, 214. NVIDIA, 230. This is big for NVIDIA. So I'm going to show you why. If I go to the daily chart and I get a little bit more time here, this is a pretty big level for NVIDIA heading into today on the daily. Um, right here, if I go back to, this is back in September of... Uh, 2021, August, September of 2021, we topped out around this 230 right here. We topped out, we rejected. Later on, we obviously squeezed to the upside. This was a time to be alive. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> it, what a time to be alive during this period on NVIDIA. This was insanity. I remember this vividly, like it was yesterday. Uh, it is money everywhere, just falling from the skies here, uh, trading NVIDIA back here in October November of 2021. Um, but anyways, rejection in uh, in September here around 2.30. And you guys can see, look at where we're trading at today. And look at where we've double topped uh, over the last few days, right? Thursday of last week, we topped at 2.30 on the dot. And this morning, or after hours, or I'm sorry, yesterday, we topped out at 2.30 again. So you can't go long in the 2.30. Right, you can't just be long here and say, "Oh, I'm gonna wait for the. I'm gonna just buy it here and hope it breaks out." You wait for the 2:30 break. You look to see if 2:30 can turn into support today. If it does, and the market does find some strength, if the market is uh, is with Nvidia, if the market is moving up and Nvidia is holding 2:30, you might be able to set yourself up a nice long trade there. If the market's weak today, you might be get setting up a beautiful rejection play. Right, you got 2:30, 2:30. And it's not only in the short term, it's this weekly chart, previous high here at 230. That's a possible rejection point. Obviously, NVIDIA has been a monster, so I'd be careful getting in front of it on the short side. Uh, it has been nuts. Uh, it just holds up every, every day. So just be careful on that front. Um, so just keep an eye on this 230. If the market is strong, if NVIDIA is over 230, that could be a nice little break and retest today. I'd keep an eye on that. All right. But understand that that 230 is a big level. Google. So I am long Google, uh, for better or for worse. You know, I this is this is one of those plays, right? This is what I talk about. This is a play that you have to take. You have to accept the uncertainties. You have to use your technical analysis. You have to accept if you're wrong. But there's uh, this is a good play in my head. So I took Google long yesterday back at this 93 area. This was a previous triple top here. This is a previous demand, a previous rejection point that I believe can turn into a new demand here on Google. I think Google has sold off a pretty ridiculous amount over the last few days, down about 15%. Uh, and it's the selling is slowing down, right? Volumes decreasing, selling slowing down here at this previous high at 93. So I did take a little stab at some longs here on Google yesterday at 93. I'm a little early to it. 
It's very contrarian, um, but right, risk reward is there, right? Because I'm risking probably about 50 cents. I think I entered around 93.50. I'm risking about 50 cents to make if this thing just sort of pushes back and fills uh, this downside from back on Thursday. I mean, I'm risking 50 cents to make eight dollars. So I mean, risk reward just it just makes a lot of sense to me there, and that's why I went for it. Um, so we'll see what happens, right? I need the market to hold up. I need uh, I need the uh, the forty one fifty level to hold. I'm sorry, the forty one hundred level to hold today. If those start to break down, then obviously I'm going to take a loss here on Google. Uh, but I like this setup, right? I like Google. Uh, I like for it to return. I like for it to rebound with the tech sector if we do get that. Uh, and I like to see if this demand holds at ninety three. So figured I'd share that. Uh, just full transparency. If it's below 93, guys, know that I'm probably taking a loss. So, yeah, that's that. Um, I want to see it over 96. 96 would really be the key breakout on Google, in my opinion. Uh, if we can get over 96, then I think you could really start to squeeze here. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of shorts stacked up at this 96. So if we get over 96, that would be something I'd look for. But it looks like right now, a little weak in the pre-market. So we'll see if I get stopped out of this one today. Um, but yeah, that's something I'm watching. Google off 93. Obviously going to need a strong market. Right now, market's not really that strong at the moment. All right, so that's Google. Uh, Meta, Upstart is running. What happened with Upstart? <laughs> I don't even know. Meta. Meta, meta. So there's a few different looks that I'm watching meta on. Uh, it's it's difficult here because I can see two different stories on this. Depending on the time frame I'm looking at, I see two different stories. It really is going to come down to what the market does. Uh, if the market is weak, uh, then we could see us break below this previous channel high. But as of right now, meta has held... This previous channel high pretty well. This 170, 172 area, previous like five, six rejection points uh, back in June. I'm sorry, July. Yeah, June, July, August, September. All these previous rejection points at 172 turned into a pretty decent support here on Meta. So I could see if the market is strong, there could be a little hold here on Meta of 172. That's going to depend on if the market's strong, right? What I could also see, if I go to the 30-minute chart, I could also see Meta rejecting the previous lows here around this 181.50, right? This is also possibly the short-term look, right? If the market's weak today, you're rejecting these previous lows. You're turning it into a little bit of a rejection point here very clearly, right? Very clearly. You can clearly see previous lows here have turned into a rejection point. So I think it's going to depend on the market. If the market does unravel a little bit, I could see Meta reject and maybe retest that 172. You guys can see we broke it. We retested it. We turned it into a rejection here, right? Um, and if the market is weak today, if we do break some of those uh, downside demand levels, maybe you can grab Meta here uh, back into the 172s, 173s. If the market is strong and we do break back above this 181.50, Right, I think that is where that daily chart look could come to life. Uh, obviously, going to depend on the market, like I continue to say. If the market's strong, if we do reverse on this market back to the upside, then uh, you know this demand down here from the previous channel could hold up, because right now it is holding up. So Meta, I think, is a watch to either way. Right, I think it's a watch to either way. I think you'd, it depends on the market. Uh, I would say watch in the short term this 181.50. See what happens at this 181.50, right? So previous lows here, 181.50 on Meta, but you do have that weekly, you do have that major, major demand down right now at 173. So watch out for that, all right? Uh, coin. So just wanted to bring up Coin today because it could be a nice either fade play if we do get weak, or it could also be a hold, right? So I want to I wanted to bring this up. I don't typically trade Coin. Um, but you know, I figured I'd bring it up. Uh, no, Tommy, that's my set by array that you saw E-Trade. It's, it's just a, I have two accounts. Uh, so here's coin, 
right? And I like this to both ways today. I'm definitely going to be watching this. This could be a little play for me. So I'm watching. I'm going to put an alert here at 6180. I want to see if it's at or above 6180. Um, you guys can see we pushed higher into 6180, right? Rejection there. We moved lower back into this 56. We squeezed through it. Now we've come back to 56. We've held it again, right? So this demand stepped up again at 56. Very clear. However, we're now pushing back into the previous rejection point at 62 right here. So today you look to see, does coin reject 62? And if it does, can you fade this move, right? If the market gets weak, can you fade this move off 62? previous high into another rejection or if the market's strong can you play the break and hold of 62 and are you looking to see if this is a break and retest of this previous demand right demand here demand here right is it going to break 62 if it does then you can see if it holds above 62 and then maybe there is a little bit move here to make up some of this aggressive downside but that's obviously going to again depend on the market uh, depend on the strength across the board. So we're just going to have to watch this 62 level on coin today. I think there is uh, I think there's an interesting potential setup to both ways here off 62. So I would watch it. I would watch it. Shop. Oh, shop. What's shop? Oh, because of retail sales. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, baby. Yeah, <laughs> it's starting to happen already. But hey, earnings are today. So you got to be a little cautious. But look at this. Look at this. Yeah, I had some shop swing trades that I took off just for the just just to be safe, just to manage my portfolio correctly. Uh I had a stop under 49 and I stuck to it. Probably could have just sort of sawed out a little bit more, but I did take a little loss on my shop swing. I took it back here at 50. I took some March calls and uh and uh you can see look at this hold and look at the flag that's potentially breaking out here. This looks very interesting. Now, of course, we do have earnings today, so be careful in that front. Shop IV contract. The IV on these contracts are probably going to be north of 150% today, I would assume. Um, and this is a pretty sexy-looking flag. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> so, um, yeah, shop, big breakout. Retail sales are probably helping it a little bit because, uh, you know, as you guys know, shop is a online retailer. Um, so... I'm probably going to stay away from this. I'll be honest. Uh, I'll probably just hold my shares uh, because I have shares. I don't need to worry about IV with my shares. I'll probably stay away from this one uh, just because of the IV on the contracts is going to be ridiculous. But if I zoom into the shorter term, we can try to spot some levels to watch out for for the upside. So we're back above this 51 I would say look to see if 51 does hold today. That's going to be key if we get a pullback. 51, you're really just sort of bouncing into some of these previous little wick rejection points. So I guess you can just continue to watch these rejections. 52, 52, 75, and then around this 55, 54. You can watch for some of those levels today. Just watch some of these previous pivot highs, right? Pivot here, you pivoted here, you pivoted here. So watch out for like that 52.20. That 52.75, that 54.50 up here. And then I would say if you can try to hold 51, that would be key. But again, guys, IV on these contracts are not going to be in your favor. I'd probably stay away from it on options. Uh, you could maybe trade the shares. Um, shop is 123 IV. Yeah, yeah, stay away. Uh, so you got earnings today. Let's keep an eye on it for tomorrow. Once the IV drops, once earnings comes out, then we can see if we can play it. But that is an interesting little flag break on shop. All right. TSM. So I don't know. I'm I'm just I'm being a little contrarian here on TSM. Should should TSM drop the way it did off of a decrease in the Warren in Warren Buffett's stake? Yeah, pros possibly, because it did move higher back here based off that. Right? This is when uh Warren I think this is back in, is it here or was it here? No, I think it was here. Yeah, it was here. This is back when they announced the stake in TSM, so it did move up quite a bit, and maybe it does need to move lower based off the fact that they sold a part of it. Um, but I'm going to stick to the technical level here, right? I'm a little interested to see whether this 92 holds as a demand today, 
I'm a little bit interested. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to keep an eye on this thing. Does 92, does 91, this whole area, does this sort of hold as a demand? And does the downside from yesterday cause any type of opportunity? All right. That's something that I'm going to be watching here on TSM today. Obviously, chips have been strong, right? Is the downside here? You can see in the, in the uh, this was after hours last night. You can see this big aggressive downside sell right into 92 demand. Is there a possibility or is there opportunity here, right? Is there opportunity to long TSM off this demand and see if it makes back some of that downside off of uh, Buffett's announcement? Something I'll be watching. Not sure I'll take it because it is very aggressive, very contrarian, uh, very against what the market did. But yeah, I'm going to keep an eye on it. Figured I'd share it. All right. Let's, uh, yeah, we held again. We held again. Look at that wick. Did Google turn around for me? Yeah, Google's still holding up for me. I like this daily chart on Google. I'll show you guys the daily. Look at that daily. Uh, see this daily candle? I really like that daily candle yesterday. And this little gap fill. We filled this gap. You can see this gap here on, on Google. We filled that gap, and we're sort of reversing off of it. So, yeah, I'm pretty confident. I like the Google play. I, I'd be in this regardless if I win or, lo win or lose. I like it a lot. All right, let's... Uh, Let's pull up the stocks you guys want to look at today. If you could press the like button, that would be fantastic. If we could hit two... Oh, no one's using this anymore, huh? You guys still have access to this thing? <laughs> I guess we got nothing. I'll take some, uh, I'll take some recommendations from the, from the chat today. How about that? Real quick, we got five... I'm going to go five more minutes. Take some recommendations from the chat today. Press the like button. If you could... Get us to 1,000 likes in the stream. You want to look at Roblox, AbbVie, taking the first five I see as long as they're good. Roblox, AbbVie, CRM, Nike, Dow, huh? I'm going cost. <laughs> I'll go Dow for you, Daniel. I don't know why you look at that stock still, man. I really don't. I don't know why you look at that stock. All right. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Chat blew up. <laughs> Thanks for the engagement. <laughs> we got we got Roblox, AbbVie, CRM, Nike, Cost, but I appreciate the engagement in the chat. Thanks a lot. I mean, that should hopefully uh, spike the algorithm, all these tickers. Maybe we'll have to start uh, ending the stream with a ticker spam. We'll see if that helps the live streams. <laughs> the ticker spam. Um, so Roblox earnings today, uh, we bounced off this 34. We had the earnings report. It did come out positive. The only thing I'd say is I don't really trust a small cap after earnings. So I probably would stay away from it. That's my initial thought. I would never trade a small cap post earnings in my opinion. Um, if it does show any type of a willingness to hold up, just watch out for this 46 up here, right? You can see right here. 46, 46. If you do go long Roblox, if it is pushing higher, just watch out for this 46, 46, 50 up here. But I would need, I, I would never go long a small cap post earnings. I, I would never. Uh, just, just personal, personal reasons. Uh, you need some kind of pullback. You can't feel. I don't know how anyone could feel comfortable longing Roblox after this push. That just sounds like a terrible idea. So. Abvi, yeah, abvi has been pretty nice post earnings, right? We took that swing trade. It's held up really nicely. Uh, we took a swing off these lows. If you guys remember that, if you're in the live stream, loved it. Really nice trade. Big percentage win there. Um, it's getting a little bit stuck around this 154. So I think you got to get over this 154, 154, 155. You can see right here, we had previous highs here, right? Previous highs here, previous highs right here. So I would look to see if you can get it over 154. That's going to be a key. CR oh man, this looks pretty good. Oh shit. <laughs> that looks really good. Look at that little flag that's setting up here on CR Excuse me, on CRM. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that's a really nice looking chart right there on CRM. 
All right, break, little flag retest back into the triple top highs. Yeah, I think we watch CRM there. That's pretty hot. If you can actually get a market move, I think that's a pretty nice watch there. Needs to hold 165, 166. Nike. Yeah, Nike is just sort of doing its own thing here. It's It rejected that weekly chart. You can see there we got that short-term rejection, but you are sort of holding back into it, right? You're sort of holding up here. I would just, I wouldn't long Nike into this supply. I really wouldn't, right? I would not long Nike into this 130 supply. That's a weekly chart supply level. I'd watch out for that. Costco, Chef, Costco's got to break this 507 level. Right, you can see right here, previous rejection here, previous rejection here, and uh, it's rejecting it again, Chef. So you got to break that 507, 508, right? You got to break that little high here. A little bit of a head and shoulder there. Uh, if the market's weak, you might be able to play that, sh that, that short off 507, right? You might be able to catch that, actually. You can see little rejection here, little rejection here, rejected again yesterday. So if the market's weak, that could be a little sell off that 507. Pretty major rejection there. <clears throat> Dow, I don't, I don't, it's just, uh, Dow, not, eh, maybe the retest here, you could watch, 58, 58, 59. That's what I'd look for. Look for it to hold this retest. Previous highs into a support. It's got to hold this 59, 58, 70 there. All right. All right. That's all I got. Almost to 1,000 likes. If you guys can, press the like button before you head out. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here. Um, you might see me in my in the old house tomorrow on the live stream. I might travel back to Naples today. So I uh, got family in town, got a wedding to go to, another wedding to go to this weekend. Uh, so you might see me in the old stew uh, tomorrow on the live stream. So let's see. Thank you guys again for being here. I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Watch the levels we talked about on the futures. Let the futures levels decide your trading intraday. Don't go long at supply. Don't short at demand. Trust the levels. Play off of them. Look for retest entries. Look for break and retest of the levels. Don't play flushes. Don't try to play breakouts. Wait for it to break. Wait for it to hold. Don't get FOMO, right? Do everything that you guys know you should do. But like we always say, when, the mar when that bell rings, sometimes our discipline just flies out of the window. Try your best. Stay disciplined today. Um, have a fantastic night. And yeah, see you guys tomorrow. Peace.